On today's episode of fun, let's replace the exhaust manifolds on the motor with a hammer. Okay, so aside from being a total sucker for pain, the reason that I have to do this, even though these look okay for the most part on the outside, it's internal where the seawater is jacketing the internal pipe for the exhaust gases and, and then they mix in here and go out the boat. The problem is seawater plus cast iron is going to rust and deteriorate. So these manifolds, and the risers have a finite lifespan and it's as simple as that they just have to be replaced every four maybe five years uh, if they were to fail then you have water going into your motor and it is game over so this is a preventative maintenance item and unfortunately it's very expensive and very heavy these are about 50 pounds a piece these are 20 pounds so it's going to be challenging to hold this and get it all bolted back up. So we might have to get creative there or call in some support with the second set of hands. Step one in this process is very important. You've got to drain the salt water or coolant, whatever is in here, out of the manifold. So when you pop this open, you're not going to have water go into the exhaust port and then into your motor. So step one, drain the manifolds. Step two in the process, I'm going to take these hose clamps off, get them loose so I can pull this rubber hose off, and go ahead and start getting these four bolts out that hold the riser to the manifold. So this is the riser here, this is the manifold. One, two, three, four bolts. Get those bolts loose, and then we get to break out the hammer. Favorite part of any job is hitting things with the hammer. Aha! Hammer. Okay, so now that the riser is off, let's give a little more explanation as to why I'm doing this. So, these three passages are for the cooling water to keep the whole manifold and everything cool with jacketed seawater. And here is the main exhaust port where all the hot gases, exhaust gases are coming out of. So this is jacketed with the seawater. So I'm very thankful I'm doing this now and maybe not in a year because what I just found down in here, let me get the flashlight. Let's see. Is rust and moisture down in the exhaust passageway. That is not good. These were beyond the end of their life and getting ready to cost me an entire motor. I want to give you guys another shot of just how bad these were. Totally corroded and rusted on the inside. We have both the risers off on each side and disconnected from the rubber flex pipe here. That was surprisingly difficult to get this rubber hose off the end of the riser. I went ahead and also pulled off the inspection plates on both ends here. So we'd be able to stick finger in to hold on to this to lift it up and out. And I did that on both sides of the motor. So uh, just going to get a second set of hands, hopefully, and get these manifolds pulled off. Just four more bolts on each side. Then everything will be completely disconnected, and then we can start the reassembly process. Then from there, we'll see if I need to do anything different with these hoses, as I'm not putting on exactly what I'm taking off here. All right, so a lot has happened since the last segment of video, but... A lot of good happened too. Both new manifolds are on. 
And it was, of course, more difficult than anticipated. These Crusader log-style manifolds had a different alternator bracket that came out here. So we had to get real tricky with the angle grinder and just nick, nick that stuff off. I don't know, it'd be really hard to see. There we go. They get creative and take some metal off there to clear the bracket. But once we did that, the port side of the motor went right on. And fortunately, the starboard side of the motor, no problems there at all. That slid right on. Uh, what I did to help aid this process is I got two longer bolts and I cut the heads off to use these as guide studs. So I screwed these into the head and slid the gasket and slid the manifold on and then started the other two bolts, got them snug and back these guys out to put the other two bolts in. What is left to do, uh, the heavy part is done, but there's still um, the riser that goes on here and the elbow to connect to the exhaust pipe. This is probably not going to be done today because I'm going to have to do some work to the rubber exhaust hoses to get that to fit. But here are the four inch riser that'll go on and the elbow. And I guess while we're here, see how nasty all the old pieces were. They're just, just literally falling apart. You know, salt water does a number on everything. It was just totally totally rusting out. So glad to finally get this done. Um, well, done for one motor. Still got to do the other one. Liberal amounts of anti-seas. So maybe one day, because hopefully we'll never have to come back apart, but you know, probably will. And I would like to get these back out one day if I have to. So Anti-seize for days. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and slide on the riser. Like so. And I have the hardware. It came with some copper washers and some lock nuts. While we're here, some important information when assembling the riser to the manifold. So these are the studs that need to go in. The short side goes into the manifold. The nuts will go on the longer side of the threads. So that's important. Secondly, the three-hole gasket goes up like this. This is up between the manifold and the riser. The single hole gasket, for whatever reason, I think it's weird, but this is the proper gasket between the riser and the elbow. For whatever reason, they want to force all the water up to the top. I, maybe it has more of a showering effect as the water comes out of the, out of the elbow and mixes. Maybe they want it to come from the top so none of this gets warm up here. So that's very important how the gaskets go and how they're oriented. This goes right here. The single hole gasket will go between here and the elbow. Okay so day two on the exhaust job. Um, pretty much all done and everything uh, is fitted and works well. Had to do some modification with the exhaust hose and had to get a little new piece of hose right here. All in all, not too bad. So the only problem I ran into is the studs for the risers 
had water leaking out of them. Now I'm assuming the studs go through the water jacket, but you know, these are the studs I'm talking about here. I'm sorry, here and here, there's four on each side. I didn't have any instructions with this, so I didn't do anything. Uh, it came with a copper washer to supposedly seal it, but it had a little bit of a drip. So I took each stud out one by one, jammed a bunch of RTV on it, uh, form a gasket sealant, non-hardening. The internet said that was a good way to start. So I'm gonna try this, tighten it back down, and I'll check for leaks again. But overall, the job was difficult only because of how heavy things are and how tight it was to get, uh, especially on this side. But one side's done, other side next, maybe next month. But a lot of lessons learned on this side, this sh so next go around should be a whole lot easier. But uh, what's left is just cleaning up uh, the mess, which is a requirement for every project that I do. So, you know, it is what it is. And like always, I'm a total mess, but we're getting the job done. Shout out to Uncle Rick for helping me get this stuff installed, an extra set of hands. I really appreciate that. And I'll catch you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.